the opening night and they're lighting the lights. The orchestra is tuning to make sure they sound right. It's time to start our show I got into theatre from quite a young age. Uh, from the age of three, I was being regularly taken to the theatre by father and mother. They would take me to see the classics, Titus Andronicus, Equus, or all, all the big name plays um, about this, about despair and about um, and about misery. And uh, and that's when I really got influenced by the theatre. On my fifth birthday, I was given a pen my sixth birthday a typewriter and that is the same typewriter that I use to write all my plays today. Uh, I've replaced the ribbon four times but I really feel that that real mechanical thudding noise um, has really helped really get to the drive and the motivation of all my characters. As a playwright one of my greatest achievements has been my, uh, my first work which is called Death Die Run. Uh, which was uh, a play uh, with gritty realism, a dark subplot. Um, it was set over 50 years uh, in a dystopian universe uh, filled with despair, misery, and, uh, and it was reviewed uh, universally badly. <laughs> Good bless them, Mark. I come from Padua by a prime mark. On my journey with climate, your father, I feel you so. I'm currently working on a new script with the theatre and it's, uh, it's one of the most exciting uh, things that I've... It's one of the most exciting things I've had the chance to work on. It's, it's dark, it's full of despair and uh, it really gets to the core of what it means to be human. Um, that said, Jack and the Beanstalk is a pantomime and so it will have occasional songs and uh, perhaps a he's behind you moment. The last piece of theatre I saw was a play called Chlamydia's Journey. Dad! Fortitude! Dad! Dad, where are you? Dad! Dad, grade 8 painting! It was one of those plays which really gets to the heart of what it really means to be human. What it means to have loss and to go on a journey, both literally, metaphorically and transdimensionally. I think there was something about that play which really touched me inside. It got to the core of me. It was a rustling play, a play that... Um, I hated it. Originally for the uh, Liverpool Theatre Live we were asked if we could produce um, something about theatre, maybe interviewing people um, about their experience of theatre. Um, and that, that sounded like it might be hard work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, we just sort of thought, well, what do we know a lot about? And we do know a lot about theatre because we primarily just work in theatre all, <laughs> all the time. So we just thought, like, what are the people who are surrounded in a the theatre? And then we just started talking about funny little stories that we had and things like that and then we ended up coming up with the idea of doing some small sketches about all the different types of people that we've ever met or yeah all sort of like yeah took up took off from so sort of thing. does that make sense yeah sort of thing. does that make sense yeah because sometimes you know when you do a play out of theatre my favourite bit as much as enjoying the play is in your meet after and who you have chats with because they're sort of they're the characters, they're the characters that, that, that inspire you don't they. Yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary ordinaries, I like to call them people. I think all the characters who are in, in, in the sketches, um, they're all heightened versions of people we've met yeah. um, who we wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> or worked with, or whoever, yeah, yeah, along the way throughout the, the years of being in the business. So, yeah, so it just made sense, and then we just came up with the title Theatre Inside Us, because that's basically <laughs> just a random. That's random, wasn't it? It just came out. I think, it, I think it was the most pretentious title. Yeah, it was the most pretentious, yeah. yeah. Just seem to suit it, oh, really. And do you all have like a joint favourite episode? Before, I, well, I've spoken to a lot of people, and a lot of people have seen it. Have all got different, different favourite. I mean, my 
My favourite was the, um, the the people who come to see the see the the theatre. They come and they sit in the same spot every time. They were my favourite characters, just just because they were, they just she just made me laugh a lot. Just while we were making it, so Kelly made me laugh a lot when we made it, and then. Uh, but look, everyone's got a different. So many people have got different different views on it, and a lot of people like the cleaners, and then a lot a lot of people like the writer. They've got little bits, the little bits, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of actor friends like the actors. actors yeah. You know, because we're basically my characters, just a heightened version of me, it's really. <laughs> so um, I quite like the super duper fans, yeah, just because you make. Fun. I like your wig in that, and I just think it's just, spoons. I don't know. Spoons is funny in that. She says spoons a lot in that. Do you say spoons? Fun. But it's quite nice just hanging outside a stage door for hours on end yeah. with, with a little pal. I really, I really like the uh, I like the cleaners one, but I think mm. I like it because it's not quite tragic in the end. Yeah, it's a lot of tragic. Yeah, yeah. yeah like a tragic love story. I, I like that it just doesn't it just doesn't resolve itself in a nice traditional Disney type way. Yeah. He's massively in love in love with his co co-worker, but she doesn't love him. It's quite sad. And so I, love, I, love, I love that idea of you. Um, like two people can have to do all the same things but having completely different views of it. I think mean, that's kind of quite nice yeah. and massively true in life. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they, it's just like why it's like why do you even go to the theatre together? But they go to the theatre together and they both like like completely different shows, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so in answer to your question, there's a lot of different little bits from all of it, so that's probably the answer to your question, but my personal favourite is the, the theatre goers. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, theatre's important to us because it gets us out of the house, it's lovely, you know. I bring him to everything, don't I? And there's so many theatres in the city, you know, and you can get the bus and you don't have to walk far and it's just a really lovely, you know, really lovely atmosphere, isn't it? And it's great that I've got that person who's got the passion for it just like me, isn't that right? What number is this? T tell them what number this is, Kevin, and why you, why, you, why you like these seats. We always sit in these same seats. 14, 15. And, and why is that, Kevin? Leg room. Yeah, and what, what else? Well, the, the comfortable and the cheapest ones. Some of the plays I've seen, I've kept the programmes from all of them, haven't we? Got them in that drawer, you know, where you shove everything in and he looks at them, don't you? It's great we've seen cats, dogs, guys and dolls, guys and just guys. That were fruity, weren't it? Mm. Midsummer's Night's Dream, Midsummer's Night's Nightmare, Evita, Rivita. That was a dry musical, mm. that, that one. Like Listen Armless, Ms. Les, Princess and the Pea. It's a funny casting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Blamange, the trilogy. Very Cross the Mersey, Mamma Mia, Break Up the Mersey, Concrete the Mersey. Mm. A view from a bridge, a view from a hill. We remembered Hills, the importance of being in earnest. Stephen Burkhoff's The Trial, The Crucible. Joseph, Joseph 2. That lady's not for turning, nail the coffin clothes, migrant the musical, enemy of the people, the seagull, custard lies, bright phoenix, blood brothers, mm. Aki, purple Aki the musical, ashes to ashes, the dumb waiter, wind in the willows. You oh, do... I didn't understand that one though. No. I didn't get that one, did you? No. Well, funny one that. End game, wait for God or wait for Lucky, and some the babble, who first spray her clip, the presenters, the producers, Tango and Cash the musical, and Chlamydia's journey. That were a duo, weren't it? Were different. It were terrible that. No, that one. Oh, it's terrible. Dad! Fortitude, Dad! Dad, where are you? Dad! Dad, grade 8 painting! What do you like about it? Sometimes he gets asked to review. The performance that touched me the most was Chlamydia's Journey. Alright, we're alternative, we're edgy, we're mad. But it took me somewhere I've never been before. You know? And I like being taken out of my comfort zone. What about you, Kevin? Don't know. We were dead excited, you know, when you asked us to talk to camera like Vox Pops, because I've never been asked to do anything like that. I'm dead ashamed, you know, dead embarrassed. And I said to Kevin, come on, you know, we love theatre, let's just do it, didn't we, Kevin? Kevin? Bernard Matthews. You're here for production meeting today. What is next for you guys? So we're kind of, we, we, uh, we did the first five, and they, they seemed all right. So um, we kind of had a chat and thought well, maybe we should do some more um, and make it into a longer an episode. 
in a more traditional sense, kind of 22, 25 minute thing. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the thing we're kind of... Yeah, we've been sort of sitting down just planning uh, sort of the longevity of it and the idea of if we made like eight episodes or, you know, how, how you know, we go from a to B basically and you know does it have an arc and what's the bigger picture of it just in, in case but we, we're really focusing on making an, an actual full one, one episode and then seeing what happens really just seeing what people think of that and then, you know, maybe just, create some more characters that yeah. you know live in the theatre maybe the office characters more cause... yeah yeah and a bit more planning because mm. last time because we were on a deadline really fast mm. deadline we didn't have much time to plan so a lot of it was like quickly take quick one take wonders some of them was like one take wonders and stuff like that which were great which yeah. were great. Mm. So unusual as well so you know we just had one chance to do it right and then that was it so it's quite nice that pressure but afterwards it'd be nice just to plan it and spend a little bit more time on it and trying to make it a bit more high quality i think it's a different sort of uh kind of fish really because like a three minute thing it's about how do you get to the point really quickly get get the punchlines in and then that's it you don't have to go anywhere apart from that um, whereas with 25 minutes, actually, there's so much other stuff that has to happen, the pacing has to be completely different. So I think that's going to be the challenge about mm -hmm. how we transfer what we've done so far into something that is watchable and doesn't blow, blow your mind too much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, 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 I agree. It blows your mind. <laughs> yeah, that's very smooth. Very smooth. But yeah, so that's it. What's the space really? I think we'll just do it and see what happens. Eh? Yeah, I mean, eh? you've had bite sized pieces, so now, you know, hopefully we can create some kind of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, if you want to see more, yeah, I know you've already seen a couple already, but if you want to see more, then uh, stay tuned uh, to the theatre show on Bay TV. Fantastic. That's it. That's all, Nate. Good evening, my name is Henry Cherney and I'm the owner of Q Comedy. Tonight is our comedy night. Q Comedy started, um, in my mind, around about uh, six or seven months ago. Uh, I really wanted to open my own comedy gig, uh, even though I'm doing gigs all around the North West. And I have a friend who owns Expresso Plus, where we, have, we are here tonight. And I approached him, and because I've known him for many, many years, with the idea of opening a comedy night, but all the proceeds going towards the charity. It's two charities, Parkinson's Disease and Calm. Hi, my name's Tim Gray, and I'm the owner of Espresso Plus here in Mossley Hill. One of the charities which we support here is Calm. The reason that I promoted this particular charity is that I play for Sefton Park Cricket Club, and sadly, three years ago, a young man took his own life at Sefton. And because of that, the club has started promoting CALM, which, for those of you who don't know, is the campaign for living miserably. And it is for young men who are suffering from depression, uh, and depression and suicide being the biggest killer of young men under 30. So that's why we're supporting that here tonight. We run these once a month, the third Tuesday of the month. We started in September last year and we're going to run every month uh, this year as well. Well, we're a, we're, we're, I mean, we're only open daytimes as, as normal, so we're, we're a coffee shop, but we are licensed. So we've got a full bar. But then on the comedy nights, we offer hot dogs, uh, nachos and burgers. So good wholesome food to go with the comedy. Um, they can find out in a number of ways. One way is to go on Expresso Plus website where they advertise our gigs. Second of all is they can contact me, Henry Cherney, on Facebook. Uh, and in the future I will have my own website, comedy website, set up. Uh, but that's going to be a little while. But they're the, they're the two main ways of finding out. So I'm Gav, Gav Cross, and uh, this is my night, this is my gig, this is my show, 
Uh, I bring in the best people who come and bring their shows and their stories, but the reality is, after that, there's a podcast. We uh, put it on here in 81 Renshaw Street, but it's live. It's live out on the internet. You could listen if you're not here, and we are sold out tonight. You could listen in on Spreaker. All the links are on my Twitter, Funny Looking Pod, and you can join in or listen back. And we interview our guests, we talk to the audience, people call in, people Skype in. And really, it's a platform. It's a platform to launch what I think is a multimedia opportunity here. It's comedy, it's live internet, it's video, it's everything. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 81 Renshaw Street to the second live Funny Looking Presents! Sean. All right, Sean. All right, mate. All right, Sean. <coughs> What's your name? Uh, all right, all right, Sean. My name's Top Joe. All right, I'm an artisan. And what are you doing here tonight? Tonight, here tonight, I'm at Looking Funny Live. Um, I'm the audience manager. All right. Funny Looking presents. Sorry, Looking Funny presents. I'm the audience manager. I've been picked from 1,000 applicants. Uh, my job, I'm being paid 200 pounds per evening. I basically my role is to go around the audience. I go, I go around the audience with a microphone and I, I place it in front of people when they need to talk. All right, it's a very essential position. Also, I'm like a shaman, all right? I'm trying to get people to have, you know, some kind of psychedelic experience that goes beyond the five senses. And um, what challenges have you got tonight? Uh, you know, managing the audience, is there gonna be a lot of like, fights or? Yeah, there's gonna be a big fight tonight. Uh, the, last time there was a bit of a scuffle between myself and Gav Cross. This was over a cherry tomato that I was trying to get to one of the guests. And I was also, I went into the kitchen to cook some beans, which I apparently I'm not allowed back into the kitchen to cook. So we, we, had, so we had a bit of a scuffle last time, um, but hey! we'll try not to have a fight. Guys, can we just keep it down a bit, guys? Just trying to do, I'm on the BBC. So, um, you know, just trying to keep the noise, the noise down a bit. Right, so Funny Looking has been around for a while. It was a podcast idea. I wanted to interview comedians. And what I found out is I'm, I'm, I'm more interesting than I gave myself credit for. So I, I set up a live show. I set up, we do it every Sunday night, nine o'clock uh, from my attic. And I thought, well, that's a good start. But then what's the next best thing? Real people, real people and me. And I, I bring in people to help me. Uh, they help me uh, by talking uh, to the audience, by drawing them in. Uh, by, by setting them up really because people just want to get close, they want to get to know me. I, I kind of want to get to know them, uh, but I want to hear their stories. This, this man is my guest tonight. Uh, his name's Arthur Smith and he's going to be on the telly tonight. He's friends with Greg Dyke, the BBC, BBC controller. And uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to try and get some food to him tonight. And mm. I'll be cooking for him. Are you happy with that? Uh, I'm mindless. There we go. Perfect, uh, gentlemen. Mm. All right. That's enough. It's fine. Sorry. It's fine. Thank you. But no, a bit more. Just. But guys, make sure you tune in. I've got a five-year plan for Funny Looking Live. Uh, I've got an eight-year plan to start an alternative comedy club in Liverpool. All right. Then I'm going to take that to Greg Dyke, the Controller General of the BBC. All right. It's going to be Top Joe International. All right. It's going to. I'm, I'm going to be selling basic hardware. I'm going to be selling a, cl a clothing range. It's going to offer psychedelic experiences, retreats, that sort of thing, and basic um, lawyer, barrister kind of needs. So if you have any claims, oh, just come. What's of it me. is Greg Dyke because he he left and opened Greg's, didn't he? The shop. Greg Dyke has opened Greg's, selling pasties, bakeries. So uh, you mean he he's not controlling the BBC anymore? All right, okay. Uh, hello, I am Arthur Smith, uh, ancient comedian of this parish, and I'm up in Liverpool doing a new show that I've never done before called Mindlessness. And so what made you decide to be Mindlessness to Liverpool? Uh, <laughs> well, I've always felt that Liverpool would be a very good home for mindlessness, and I've had a deal with my mate Gav, 
uh, to try out mindlessness here. The, you know, in the wet sense, it's the mecca of mindlessness, Liverpool, I suppose. Well, Arthur Smith, a legend. I'll tell you the truth, I saw Arthur Smith when I was 14, when I first got into watching stand-up in South East London, and uh, now him coming to do my gig, it's a real honour for him. I really think that. Um, that, that he would come, I mean he's normally he's used to doing very big venues and tours, but he would come here to 81 Renshaw Street. Uh, I think he'll find that a very special experience. So the 14 year old me is quite smug right now. What are you looking forward to about tonight? Then? I'm really looking forward to going home at the end of the night, obviously. But I, I'm actually definitely looking forward, because this really is, you know, you have to do something for the first time somewhere. And uh, that is the most terrifying thing, you know, like the first time you've ever presented something, uh, especially if you don't really know what the hell you're doing and, uh, you know, and you haven't really had a technical rehearsal and then you're an idiot in the first place. But you see, that's all right, because that is mindlessness. And through mindlessness, we will come on to other galaxies without boundaries, without trousers, without horses, and without other stuff. after this, where you perform it? Well, I may never ever do it again if it's an absolute sodded disaster. Uh, but I, who knows? Who knows I may do it in, uh, I, you know, if it goes not too, if it isn't like catastrophic, uh, then I'll do it again probably somewhere in London at the end of January, start of Feb, then I'll pick out a few gigs and then uh, who knows, maybe I'll take it to Edinburgh and then on to New York, Melbourne, Alaska, and then out into space and do the first ever gig to be performed by a human being on Mars. So next month is Holly Byrne. Holly Byrne, but is it Holly Byrne? You'll know Holly Byrne, she went viral last year uh, with a parody of Posh Spice. She was on Bad Bridesmaids, but she's, she's doing... So she's doing uh, Holly Byrne, she's doing Kirsty Kay, uh, and Kirsty Kay is a character of hers that uh, she... Uh, this is Top Joe. Top Joe helps me out with the gig. Kirsty Kay. Holly Byrne is coming and she's going to be Kirsty Kay and she's putting some new material on and uh, she's a clown. She's uh, a performer. You can find out more. Just funny looking pod all over the place. Funnylooking.co.uk. Come and see her show. Come and join in the podcast. Uh, you are very, very welcome. Why would you do that? Have you broken it? Have you broken it? I was just just doing some basic experiments. <laughs>